we invite you to travel with us for a while on the river of imagination in the flood of primordial time. Let us fast forward at the rate of a century per second to 1982 years, written in 1950, before today. In the southern part of the Tirumunapati country, between the Thande country and the Chola country two furlongs to the west of Thilich Kirambalam, a lake like the Sea of Waves stretches out. It is called Viranarayana Lake. It is one and a half years long in south north and half an ear wide in east west. With the passage of time, its name has been corrupted and today it is given the name of Viranata Lake. Anyone who sees the Viranarayana Lake during the months of Adiyavani when the new flood comes and lake is full of water cannot fail to feel proud and amazed at the great things that our ancestors of Palandamalai have achieved in their time. Did our forefathers only do what was in their own interest and the interest of their contemporaries? Didn't they accomplish great deeds in the motherland that would be beneficial to the thousand-year-old descendants who would come to them later? On the evening before the 18th day of Adith Monday, a young hero was riding a horse on the banks off the Viranarayana Lake, which was as wide as the waves. He belongs to the Vinar clan famous in the heroic history of Tamil Nadu. His name is Valavarian Vandiyathavan. His horse was pacing slowly tired from a long journey. The young warrior didn't care about that. The sight of the vast Avan Viranarayana lake had so charmed his soul. On the 18th day of Adai, all the rivers of Kolanatu are flooded, touching both banks. The lakes that receive water from those rivers are usually full and the waves touch the top of the banks. The water from the river given by the devotees as Veda Kaveri and as Kaladam by the common people came through Vadavat and flowed into the Viranarayana lake, turning it into a raging sea. Through the 74 passes of the lake, the water was gushing and providing water for a long distance. Plowing and planting were going on in the fields with the lake water as far as the eye could see. Thepiasants who were plowing and the peasant women who were planting were singing melodious songs here and there. Hearing all this, Vandiyadavan was walking slowly without driving his tired horse. Since climbing the lake bank, he kept counting the passes with the intention of knowing whether it is true that the lake has 74 passes. Aha! How big is this lake? How long? How wide? Don't you think that all the lakes built during the time of the Pallava emperors in the Thande country are small ponds in front of this lake? Did Prince Rajaditha, the son of Paranthagar of Madurai, think of constructing a lake like the sea in order to house the water falling in the North Kaveri in vain? Did you intend to do it? What kind of intellectual must he have been? Who else is equal to him in heroism? Didn't he himself mount an elephant and fight in the battle at Thakolam? Didn't he die befitting and bearing the work of his enemies on his chest? That's why he became known as the elephant-mounted god and reached heroic heaven, didn't he? The kings of this Chola clan are amazing. They are as much in valor as they are in virtue. They are the best in virtue as well as in godliness. Vandiyadeva's shoulders swelled to think that he had the privilege of making friends with such Chola kings. His heart swelled with pride just as the waves of Lake Viranarayana hit the shore with a gust of wind from the west. With all this in mind, Vandiyadevan came to the south bank of Viranarayana Lake. There he saw the view of Vedareya, which had separated from Veda Kaveri, reaching the lake. At a short distance from the shores of the lake, the interior of the lake was a basin. In order to prevent damage to the bank when the flood comes, they have planted oak trees and shrubs in that basin. Reeds were thickly grown along the banks. From the southwest direction, the flood of then earth wind, with a row of trees on both sides, and mixing in the lake, looked like a beautiful colorful scene when viewed from a distance. Vandiyadeva saw there a few more scenes which added to the sweetness and joy of this lovely appearance. Wasn't it the day of the 18th birthday? People from the neighboring villages were coming there in droves, pulling sappers made of ivory colored coconuts. Men, women, children, and even some old people had come wearing new clothes and wearing various decorations. The women's hair was decorated with bunches of flowers like Dalamhu, Savandafu, Jasmine, Malai, Irwachi, Senapagam, etc. Many people had come in families with Kotankur and Chitranam. 
Some people stood by the water's edge in the banks of the lake and put Chitranam etc. on Kamagubats. A few more brave men walked a short distance through the water and reached the northern shore and ate while standing there. Some of the children threw the eaten Kamagubats over the side of the passes and laughed heartily as they saw Thebats fall through the passes and run out to the lake shore. Some of the rowdy men unknowingly took the flowers from their girlfriend's hair and left them on the side of the pass and were delighted to see them running to the other side of the lake. Valavarian was standing there for some time watching all this. He also listened to the singing of some of the women standing there with sweet voices. They sang Otapatam, Flood Song, Gumi, and Sindh. Others sang hymns in praise of the Chola kings. Some women sang of the bravery of Vijayalaya Chola, who fought in 32 wars and had 96 wounds on his body adorned as ornaments. A woman sang a beautiful song in praise of the valor of his son Aditya Chola, who had built 64 temples from the source of the river Kaveri to the point where it joins the sea. Another girl sings the Maikirti of Adithan's son Parantaka Chola Maharaja who defeated the Pandyas, Pallavas and Cheras and sent an army to Elam and hoisted the victory flag. As each one sang, Many stood around her and listened. The occasional ah, ah, they chanted and expressed their happiness. An old woman noticed Vandiyathevan listening to their songs while sitting on a horse. Brother, looks like you've come a long way. You're tired. Get off your horse and eat some corn. She said. Immediately, many young girls saw our teenage journey. They talked among themselves secretly about his appearance and laughed merrily. Vandiyathevan was gripped by shame on one side and joy on the other. He thought for a moment whether the old woman would go down and eat the food she offered. If he goes like that, it is certain that many of the young women standing there will surround him and laugh in admiration. So what? Is it easy to find so many beautiful women in one place? Even if they laugh at themselves, the sound is divine. To the young eyes of Vandiyathevan, all the maidens standing on the banks of the lake appeared as Arambays and Minakais. But at the same time a sight appeared in the current of the north wind in a southwest direction which made him hesitate a little. Seven or eight great streams, spread with white mats, were speeding up, driven by the upper wind, like swans floating on the water with outstretched wings. All the people who were engaged in various activities on the shore of the lake started eagerly looking towards the direction of the boats. One of the boats rushed ahead of them all and reached the corner where the lake bank turns north. In that boat there were many auspicious warriors carrying sharp bright swords. Some of them jumped on the lake shore and shouted at the people there, Go! Go! They chased that away. Leaving no room for them to chase away more, the people also took their utensils etc. and started hurrying to the shore. This did not make any sense to Vandiyadeva, who were these soldiers? Who comes in the mated boats behind? Where do they come from? Perhaps a member of the royal family? Valavarian approached an old man who was standing on the bank of the lake with a stick in his hand. Sir! To whom do these warriors belong? And to whom do the streams like swans behind them belong? Why are these warriors chasing away the people? Why are the people also hurrying? He asked questions. Brother. Don't you know, what? There's a flag flying in the middle of those boats. Look what's written on it. Said the elder. Looks like a palm tree. Palm tree. Don't you know that the palm vine is the scavenger vine? Mahavira is coming as the Avenger. Vandiyathevan asked in a startled voice. It must be so, who else can come with the palm wing aloft? Said the elder. Valavaria's eyes widened with boundless astonishment and looked towards the direction from which the boats had come. Valavarian had heard so much about Palyavatarayar. Who could not hear? The names of brothers Pariya Palyavatarayar and Chinap Palyavatarayar were famous from Eland in the south to Kalanganadu in the north. Their town is Palyavar on the north bank of the Veda Kaveri next to Vareur. The Palyavatarayar clan was renowned for its valor since the Vijayalaya Chola period. The family used to buy and sell with the family of the Chola king. Because of this and because of their nobility and valor, 
the Pallavatare clan had all the privileges of a royal clan. Akula also has the right to put up a separate flag. The elder of the two, the present Pallavatare, fought in 24 battles. In his time, there was no equal in the Chola country. Now that Prayatam is over 50, he does not go to the battlefields in person. But he held many of the highest positions in the Chola government. He was the dictator of the Chola Empire, commissioner, Thanabandaram and Thanyabandaram were under his authority. He had the power to levy and levy according to political exigencies. Ask any petty king, tribal chief, or big drunkard, do you want to give so much this year? He had the right to order and collect that. So, next to the Sundara Chola Maharaja, Palyavatare was now the most powerful person in the Chola Empire. Vandiyadeva's heart was filled with the desire to see such a great warrior and possessor of immeasurable strength and power. But at the same time, he remembered the message that Prince Aditha Kari Kalar had told him in private in the new Golden Palace of Kanchi. Vandiyadeva. I know very well that you are a pure warrior. And trusting that you are a good scholar, I entrust you with this great responsibility. One of the two leaves I gave to my father Maharaja and the other to my sister Ilayaprati. I hear something even about the great officials of the kingdom in Tanjore. Therefore I will send no one should know the message. No matter how important it may be, you should not know that you are taking the straw from me. Do not fight with anyone on the way. It is not enough that you do not go to the fight by force. You should not be caught even if others drag you to the fight. Even so, you will not suffer any loss of honor. Mainly, you must be very careful with the Palliavatarais and my little father Madhur and Hakar. They should not even know who you are. What are you going for? Don't let them know you're a mother. Aditha Kari Kalar, the crown prince of the Chola Empire and Mahadanda hero of the Northern Army, had said this. And Vandiyathevan had also read and told about the ways to behave. Remembering all this, Valavarian suppressed his desire to see Palyavatarayar. He knocked the horse and tried to go faster. No matter what he knocked, the tired horse went slowly. He decided in his heart that he would stay tonight at the Sambawarayar mansion of Kadampur and leave tomorrow morning while earning another good horse.